Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sosa if you don't know me and this channel is just all about me being a software engineer and graduating recently with a computer science degree and just giving all the advice that I can about computer science, software engineering and everything else that comes in between. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the five things I wish I knew before becoming a computer science major. So let's just jump right into it. The first thing I wish I knew is that a lot of people are going to have more experience than you and that's okay. When I first started taking class in the computer science major, I was a sophomore. So it was my second year into college. The first year I spent all that time thinking I wanted to be a pediatrician and thinking I wanted to go to medical school. So all the classes that I took were to fulfill the med school requirements. So I was taking biology and chemistry and things like that. And then it wasn't until the end of my freshman year that one of my friends talked to me was like hey we should take computer science together and I was like what's computer science you know the story <laughs> and so I took the class ended up loving it I felt like I was behind compared to everybody else who was already had already been taking the classes and for me I had never coded a day in my life I didn't know what programming languages were I barely knew what computer science was because there are some people who picked up coding in high school or picked it up in uh, middle school even and so for me it was just scary to think that I could be falling behind in the very beginning. Luckily, I figured out that I really loved it and that it didn't matter if I didn't have all the experience that other people had because I had I had the will and I wanted to learn and I wanted to do better and learn more. Honestly, there was a period of time where I started to doubt my abilities and where I started to doubt whether or not I was worthy enough to be in the major and whether I deserved to be there which is dumb <laughs> but at the time it's just how I felt because I didn't feel good enough to be studying computer science and the experience gap happens or can happen in any major and it can be a reason why a lot of women a lot of people of color don't stay in computer science because they see that first of all there's not a lot of people who look like them who are trying to take these classes or who are majoring in this major and then sometimes it feels like you don't get enough support or that it feels like you're not good enough to be there. A lot of the time, at least for me, it was just getting past that mental roadblock and getting past those annoying thoughts saying that I couldn't do it or that I wasn't good enough because you are and you can do it. Number two. So I wish that I knew it was okay to ask for help. This sounds like such a general easy thing to do, but for me, for some reason, I found it so hard to ask for help sometimes in my classes, especially towards the end when I was taking the harder, more robust computer science classes like architecture and design and theory and things like that. I found it so incredibly hard to ask for help. And even in, even for intro classes, I was able to ask for help. I leaned a lot on friends and teaching assistants and some professors to help me with understanding and grasping key concepts. Towards the end of the major, maybe it was because I had this complex of thinking that well, I've already gotten this far, you should be able to know how to do these things. Like, you don't need to ask for help, you can get it done yourself. And that was such a detrimental way of thinking for me. So bad that I didn't realize how bad that thought process was until the very end and until I actually really, really needed a professor's help. Make sure that if you are having trouble in one of your classes, if you, even, even if there's a small concept that you don't understand, ask, for help. There's no issue with being vulnerable and getting help from another person. In the real world, when you're working on an assignment at a job, you have to be able to work with other people. And if you sit at your desk for two hours or three hours or a day or a week or whatever it is, and your boss asks you, hey, where's the thing that you're supposed to get done for me? Oh, I was stuck and I didn't want to ask for help. Um, what? Yeah, no, you can't do that. So when you have issues, when you don't, when you're not able to figure out something on your own within a reasonable amount of time, ask for help. Number three, it's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be angry. Sometimes things don't work. Sometimes things don't go your way. And that's okay. It literally happens 
all of the time. And even since graduating from college, I still feel these moments of frustration even when I'm at work and my code is not working. Like your code can be completely right and from what you think is bug free and yet it will still fail. Sometimes you can figure out what the problem is and then you have this amazing feeling. If it goes past two hours of you trying to figure something out, cut it and go ask somebody else who can help you out and get you past whatever obstacle it is that you're facing. Sometimes for me, if I'm getting really frustrated with a bug or whatever it may be, I will get up, go walk around, maybe I'll go work out a little bit and then do something completely different that kind of takes me away from the code or whatever I'm writing in the program so that I can have a fresh set of eyes when I come back and look at it. And sometimes that'll help and that'll work. And then I'll look back at the code and be like, oh, this was a really dumb mistake that I made. Let me fix it and then things work. Sometimes that doesn't work. But if you reach that point where it's been two hours in and you still can't figure out what the problem is, go ask for help. Four. So another thing that I wish I knew in computer science is that, that it's so important to reinforce what you've learned outside of the classroom. Go build something, go learn new technologies. What we learn in our courses is amazing and it's great foundational knowledge for the things that you're gonna be doing later down the line or also right now in this moment. Even after your introductory course, whether it's in Java or Python or whatever it may be, you can build something on your own time to show off those skills and then also learn things on top of that to be able to really suss out what you can do. And to me, this is, if not one of the most important lessons that if you could take away anything, is that you should really be taking time after classes. And when you, whenever you have free time, you don't have to do this every day, but take some time to learn something else. The foundations that I learned in class were amazing and I was able to take those same foundations and use them to build a project for myself. So for me, I wanted to learn more about front end and web development and I wanted to build my own website and at that point, I only knew Python and so I took the time during my winter break to build a really cool portfolio website for myself out of HTML, CSS, JavaScript and these were languages that weren't being taught at my school but something that I really wanted to pick up and learn more about and I just wish that I would have kept with it and kept building more and more projects. I did that project and I did a couple others but nothing really sustainable and nothing beefy and meaty that really like took up my time and really forced me outside of my comfort zone. So that's something that I really wish I did was taking time, taking the time to learn as many technologies and languages as possible and being able to apply it in a big project outside of class in some way. Because even obviously you don't have to spend all of your time on computer science and programming, but especially in the job market, since it's so competitive, you wanna be able to show off all the skills that you have and having a portfolio of projects that you worked on in your free time that isn't part of some class homework that you did. It shows initiative, it shows determination, it shows, it shows persistence, and it's just such a great way to build upon the skills that you're already learning in class. So if you have some time try to pick up a language that you're really interested in or a new framework or a technology because it could really go a long way number five and i say this literally i think in all of my videos prepare for internships or job searches as early as humanly possible let me say that again in, in case you didn't get it prepare for internships or job searches as early as humanly possible. I am begging you, I am imploring you to do this because let me tell you, let me give you some anecdotal experience. Okay, so for me, I, I started applying to internships end of July, end of July, early August, around that time period when companies are really starting to look for candidates. And it's crazy because a lot of these bigger companies and even startups, they start looking for talent so early on, almost a year before you actually get hired. A year. 
So in that time, you have to start sending out your resumes. First of all, fixing it up, making sure it looks great and making sure that you have all the technologies and skills listed on your resume, any projects that you've built, any teams that you manage, things like that. Put it on your resume and make sure that you get it looked at by hopefully a professional if you have some type of career program at your school with professionals who look through resumes. Luckily, we had that at my school. So I made sure that I got my resume triple checked for no errors, no grammar mistakes, things like that. And then took my resume and started applying to as many jobs as humanly possible. Obviously mainly jobs that I was interested in, but I tried to apply to as many internships and jobs as humanly possible because at the end of the day, sometimes it becomes a number game. And sometimes it's just about how many jobs you've applied to and then it trickles down into how many follow-up interviews you get and then resulting on sites and then job offers. And I wish I had the data for how many jobs I applied to, you know, and sometimes it does work out that people are able to get their dream internships or dream jobs a couple weeks before they even start um, in engineering. But for me and for some of my friends, that hasn't been the case. And you really have to do the grunt work and prepare for sending out your resume, doing the interviews and on sites and all those things. It can be extremely draining and it can feel like you're taking another class or you're at another or you have another job that is trying to get a job. It's kind of crazy. And if you don't end up getting an internship, that's okay. You can take the time during that summer to build upon your skills and build projects that you can then show off in the next round of internship interviews. So those are my five tips on what I wish I knew before becoming a computer science major. I hope you liked it. I'll be having more videos like this in the future, so make sure to like and subscribe down below and check out some of the other videos that I've made about the same topics. And yeah, feel free to leave me some comments about what you'd like to see next. And yeah, thanks for watching.